Hey everyone, welcome back to Reading with Tatiana. Today I'm reviewing Yolk by Mary H. K. Choi, and I gave this book a 4 out of 5. Today's booktuber shout out goes to Shannon's Bookish Musings and Music. It came across her channel recently when she posted a book review of a memoir called Running with Scissors. I really like her channel because she does a mix of reviews, booktube tags, and also some do-it-yourself projects such as making your own bookmarks. So I'll link her channel down below if you want to give her some support. And as always, before I go into my full book review, I always appreciate it. If you like my channel, to please hit the subscribe button. If you like this video, to please give it a thumbs up. And if you have read this book or any of other Mary H.K. Choi's work, please comment down below. This book was published last year in 2021. I saw it everywhere on my Instagram and also uh, Goodreads. A lot of my friends who weren't even avid readers also posted about as well. And the genre I put it in is fiction and specifically I think it's more coming of age even though the protagonist is in her early 20s uh, just because I feel she's doing a lot of self-discovery. A bit about the author, Mary H.K. Choi, I just want to say that I love her author website name because it is called Choi to the World. Definitely check it out if you want to, I think it's a fun visual website as well. And she also has like really like casual, like almost talking to a friend write up, so definitely recommend checking out her website. Again, it's Choi to the World. So Mary H.K. Choi was born in Seoul in Korea. She moved to Hong Kong before she turned one, I assume, with her family, and then they moved to Texas at the age of 14. She went to the University of Texas at Austin, and she majored in textile and apparel. And after college, she moved to New York briefly uh, until ultimately she moved to Los Angeles in 2014. Why I'm sharing all these details about like her upbringing, I mean, I always do about offers anyways, but I guess I just want to comment on the parallel with the protagonist in this story because the protagonist also, um, I studied fashion and also grew up in Texas, then moved to New York. So it was really cool to see those parallels with her characters. I didn't really find out how old Mary H. K. Choi was, but I feel she's very topical for young people like me, who's a millennial and also people younger in Gen Z as well. She is known for covering a lot of topics uh, ranging from use of social media, her relationship with her mom, music, life as an expat, and also fashion. So I feel she's very topical, especially for the younger generations nowadays. On top of being a published author of three novels, Mary H.K. Choi is also a regular columnist for The Wired, MTV Style, GQ, The New York Times, The New Yorker, The Atlantic, Billboard, and The Fader. I think it's really cool because I think that's where she's really known for. And she also has two podcasts that she runs regularly. One is called Hey Cool Job, where she interviews people who have unique jobs, such as there's Aza Akira, who is a porn actress. And she also has a other podcast called Hey Cool Life, where she interviews friends, or people she knows more casually about a uh, general being in life. Now let's get into the story and the premise of the book. So this is set primarily in New York. We meet Jane who is in her early 20s. She's in university studying fashion and she lives the fast life. You know, she has a roommate slash boyfriend who doesn't treat her right. She has friends she goes party and does drugs with. She also struggles with an eating disorder and it's very clear early on that she kind of um, I guess focuses on details of her body, about like the scrunch of her pants on her stomach and that kind of stuff. So there is a bit of a trigger warning for people that have struggled with eating disorders in the past or currently. Um, and then also uh, with Jane in New York, there's also her sister June, who is a professional in her careers, I believe in the finance industry. And even though there are sisters that move from Texas to New York, uh, not together, but within a few years, they're actually not that close and Jane, our main character, actively avoids her family and also her sister. But one day, while she's at the bar, June, her older sister, tracks her down and she kind of reconnects with her. Um, I would say the relationship is really strange and strained strain from each other, but June tracks her down and she reveals very early on in the book, so this isn't a spoiler, that June, the older sister, has cancer. So very quickly, Jane is kind of her support network and they kind of reconnect, but also because their relationship is so tumultuous, they struggle quite a bit. So this book is really about uh, not just Jane and June's struggles as individuals in New York, but also their ups and downs as sisters. 
common themes that I found throughout this book. The first one I mentioned earlier, I want to get out of the way just because there's a trigger warning that is largely associated with this book is eating, dis eating disorders and body dysmorphia that Jane, the main character, goes through. Um, it starts out really discreet at the beginning of the book, but at the end, like, there definitely is a crescendo and it's very blatant and in your face. Um, I personally haven't uh, dealt with an eating disorder, uh, but I can see even someone that like me that hasn't dealt with one. At the end, I was really shocked about the detail and how graphic it was. And I was like, whoa, like this, I can see it's definitely like a trigger warning. So please be aware of that if you decide to read this book. Um, other common themes I found is obviously the sister-sister relationship. Later on in the book, the mom also comes in as well. And the mom-daughter relationships and how the mom has a different relationship with each sister. And also they are Korean-American. So also the cultural differences being raised by a mom who still have very traditional views of, uh, set in Korea, but being raised in America. So I really identify with that as well, just having been uh, raised by a Chinese mother, having these traditional Chinese views instilled on me and values, but yet I still want these Canadian values that I've been raised with or that surround me in society. So it's very interesting that um, the author talks about that, and I think it's very accurate. And the final theme that I noticed, primarily just with Jane, the main character, is her self-destructive habits over her self-worth in relation to men. She is in her early 20s, she is partying quite a bit, and you know, it's really hard to see how she has so many insecurities and feels like she's not worthy and how she continued these habits uh, with men. So yeah, these are these common themes that I found throughout this book. There were a few themes I didn't like about this book. Um, there wasn't a lot, like I almost feel this book could have been the five, but I think the reasons why I didn't like it made it a four. So number one is the sisters Jane and June are insufferable. Like, they're not likable characters, they barely redeem themselves at all throughout the book. Um, and they were just hard to read. There were several times where I felt like, oh, uh, I almost didn't want to finish this book because they aren't great people. But it's great to see their relationship change and grow throughout the book. The uh, other reason I don't like this book, and I don't want to spoil it, is the ending. It kind of leaves room for interpretation, which I guess makes sense because this book has to finish at some point, and it kind of alludes to there is some remedy, but it was just too open-ended for me, and a bit of a cliffhanger, so that was one reason why I didn't like this book. And on the counter side, even though I found the two characters insufferable, things I did like was I found Jane, the younger sister, who's now in her 20s in New York, going to school, having a fast life. She had some great quotes and observations about society in relation to herself, even if it was about her self-worth, her insecurities, or also her eating disorder that I really enjoyed. Um, I felt if I read this book in my early 20s when I was also struggling with a lot of insecurity issues and self-worth in society in relation to men specifically, I would have really enjoyed this book and gave it a 5 out of 5. But because now I'm older, um, I felt it was a bit harder to read, but I still identify a lot with Jane um, in the book. I had felt she had let, uh, very dramatic, but it makes sense for her age, so I found her very relatable. One quote I did want to share that Jane says in the book that really resonated with me is, I have wasted my entire life focusing on the wrong things and the wrong people. I don't believe how it came to be. I believe changing everything about me would change the way people treated me. And I really like that because she has this realization in the end that I think a lot of us go through in our 20s leading up to our late 20s. On Goodreads, this book got an average of 4.02 out of 5. I believe that's very accurate. This book did just come out last year, so maybe over the time it might get lower, it might get higher. But I think it's very accurate. Uh, bad reviews that people had with they just did not connect with the characters. A lot of people didn't enjoy the writing style either. And also a lot of people felt even though there was a trigger warning, the detail of the eating disorder was a bit too extreme. Good reviews that people had about this book is really related to Jane's struggles with herself and also her eating disorder and they loved her honesty and being vulnerable. People also loved how it accurately captured the push and pull of an immigrant parent and her child and the struggle of values from the home country to America, which I totally identify with, with Chinese and Canadian values. And people love how the very honest commentary about the sisters Jane and June's relationship, how you can still love each other, but you can't stand each other and the struggle with that. 
I think you should read this book if you have a sister. I don't have a sister, so a lot of things I couldn't relate to, but just reading this book, I'm like, oh, I wonder if it's very accurate for having a sister. I do have a brother, but he's quite a bit older, so it's not as close as these two sisters in the book. Um, and yeah, I would love to hear if you have a sister and read this book, what you thought of the relationship that Mary H.K. Cho created. The other reason I think you should read this book is if you've ever struggled of feeling um, the desire to belong somewhere, I think this book is for you. Like Jane really feels that when she left Texas to go to New York, New York, that she would feel like she would belong in New York. However, she still struggled with it. And I think the book really talks about the idea of home being a feeling, not necessarily a place. Now I'll share how this book made me feel because whenever someone recommends a book to me, I always like to ask how it made them feel because if you ask me a week, a year, five years from now, I probably won't remember what the book was exactly about, but I'll always remember how it made me feel. So this book, Yoke by Mary H. Choi, it made me feel that I want to have more space to acknowledge my family members and, you know, just appreciate them because they have been there for me through the bad times and the good times and you know like family is really important their blood so um yeah it, it gives me more space to appreciate my family a lot more thank you for watching until the end of my fellow book review for yoke if you want to join me next time i well i actually mentioned this book in my last video but i started this book as well so i've been reading two books between each other i just happened to finish this book first uh, but my next book, which I should finish today or tomorrow, is Know My Name by Chanel Miller. If you want to join me, that will be my next book review. I'll see you guys next time. Bye!